let's welcome to Jeff Klein. All right, Jeff. It's all over to you. So, uh, it was 2002, I think, end of 2001, I got invited to a network group, and I didn't know what that was, uh, by my friend Peppy Harris at the time, said, come to join this networking group, check out this networking group. Went to Prestonwood Country Club. There were about 60 people in the room. Some of them were obviously more friendly than others. You know, when you stand pointing your toes at each other, you're not welcoming other people to join the conversation. And so I kind of met a few people, sat down. A gentleman got up and started talking about the group. And he said, in just a moment, we're all going to do our 30-second commercials. And I looked across at Pepe, and I said, you didn't tell me I was going to have to do anything. He said, don't worry, just, just do what everybody else does. So, as you know, not everybody else did the same thing. But I listened to what everybody else did, and a couple of people were entertaining, a couple of people not so much, a couple of people were informative, a couple of people not so much, a uh, couple of people even had a little laugh during their talk, uh, a few had the whole room finish their commercial for them, that was entertaining. And then it came my turn, and I got up and I said something, and I sat down, and I couldn't tell you today what I said then, but I can tell you that whatever I said it didn't get me any results. <laughs> but that was the beginning of my journey to figure out networking, part of which was the 30-second elevator pitch. Does anybody remember Fun Ed? Fun Ed, yeah. I even took a Fun Ed class on the 30-second commercial. And then a couple years later, in 2001, uh, 2004, I got involved with an organization called CEO Space. And they taught me how to do the commercials similar to the way I teach it today. Worksheets. So what we're going to do today is we're going to talk about better ways to do a commercial. Uh, I don't mind saying the best way, but... I teach the commercial a lot different than some other folks who teach it. I know that their way works. I know that my way works better. Uh, I, I don't mind saying that I've been teaching it since 2004. And I have uh, offer money back guarantees on all my networking classes. And the only person who's ever asked for their money back was somebody who never was able to get to the class. So nobody who took it has ever asked for their that that money back guarantee refund that says. So, who is anybody here never done that 30 second commercial? Oh, stop. <laughs> <laughs> You're making that up, aren't you? <laughs> but you haven't had to go to you haven't had to do one yet. Not until I came to Well you're gonna do one later today, but try not to pay too much attention to what I because it, it'll just be confusing if you try to implement something you just learned. As a matter of fact, when I first spoke about this stuff back in 2004, people would do their, would, they wanted me to teach how to do it, and then they wanted to do what I taught. And I quickly learned that that was a mistake. Because you can't learn, you can't do something you just learned. And half the people who didn't want to change how they were doing things wound up apologizing while they were doing their, and it's like, it didn't work. So, so right, not too long into doing this, I, I made sure that they didn't try to use the lesson today for today. So that being said, I know you're doing your commercials after my talk. Don't get, just do what you planned to do when you came here. Don't <laughs> don't try to go crazy because you'll just make yourself, you'll pull a muscle or something. Uh, I want to make sure that you feel free to ask me questions as we're doing this. This is not a lecture, this is a conversation. I've just had the conversation more times than you have. Right. And this is not a shy group. Well, I, I know that. <laughs> I, I have been, yeah, I've been right here before, so yes. I do know that. Um, so, but so, please feel free to, to stop me and ask a question as we go along. Uh, who was okay? So I asked a couple of you. I had a chance to ask. What did I ask you when we were talking before the meeting? Uh, what's a good referral for you? What's a good referral for you? That's your opening question. From now on, stop asking. What do you do? Okay? It doesn't serve anybody. And you're here to network, right? So there's two reasons we network. What, what do you think those are? This What's is for us. 
Business for us, that's the first one. And what's the second one? Business for them. Business for other people. Exactly. Everything else is the process. Building relationships and all that other stuff is all part of the process of networking. We're here to grow our business and help other people grow theirs. If you're not doing the second one, the first one's not going to happen. The biggest networking organization in the world, BNI, Business Networking International, who knows their motto? Givers Gain. gain. What is that? Givers Gain. Oh. Zig Ziglar taught selling as if you help enough other people get what they want, you'll get what you want. It applies to life in general too, but it, it does apply to networking. So now it's not linear. Just because I'm giving Karen referrals doesn't mean she needs to beat me up because I haven't given her. I mean, because she hasn't. I, just because I'm giving Karen referrals doesn't mean I should beat her up for not giving me any as long as she's giving them to somebody. It's holistic, it's not linear. Now, when you have a referral partner relationship, it becomes linear, and that, we'll talk about that in a little while. Okay, but in general, as long as everybody's giving, everybody will receive. When people ask me, you know, we all meet those people who say networking doesn't work on them. Where's my uh, my lines, Jenna, where I can't walk past? You're still in. Okay. And you've got plenty of room on the Okay, side. thank you. I like to wander. And I can move it a little bit, but then I get the glass that can be distracting. Okay, so that's not good. That's good. <laughs> all right. That's good. <laughs> I'll push you back. And I'll move it. There you go. You got a little bit more leeway. Thank you. You can be jumping back, Jax, if you want. Uh, <laughs> he didn't want, I can tell. And you weren't alive. Oh, yeah. Hey, that's what I'm makes live alive. interesting. And by the way, when you were speaking, you might have had sunglasses and a hat. I'm just <laughs> saying. <laughs> nice. <laughs> okay, so where was I? Uh, um, plus and minuses. Right, right. Give me. So... When we're, so the so you know the, get rid of what do you do and just start t talking about who, what do you need who do you want to meet and that's part of this exercise is the table that's on your sheet which is who, the list of who you want to meet now the first people we want to meet obviously are customers but we shouldn't use our thirty second commercial time to ask to meet customers we should use our thirty second commercial time to ask to meet referral partners. And here's the reason. There's a couple of reasons. First reason is a customer is a transaction and a referral partner is a relationship that leads to multiple transactions. The second is a cus uh, the customer referral is I want you to introduce me to your friends so I can sell them something. Now you should be willing to do that because you want other people to make that introduction. But it's a lot easier to say I want to meet your friend to help them grow their business while they help me grow mine. So it's easier to give a referral for a partnership than for a prospect. And the prospects will come. So on that, so let's see, have we filled in all the blanks on the worksheet? I know I'm off camera now. Okay, so a networking referral is an opportunity. It's not a sale, it's not a guarantee. And it's not a recommendation unless you make it one. Okay. Yes. Sure. He shouldn't have, shouldn't have given them back to me. <laughs> we just showed up. There's a couple. Okay, so it's an opportunity, and it's only a recommendation if you make it one. I introduce people to people I meet the day I meet them, but I don't recommend them the day I meet them. I refer them. But your reputation is not attached to referrals unless you attach it. A lot of people won't give referrals until they know I can trust somebody. That may be true if you're recommending a roofer or a doctor and if you're recommending somebody to do business. If you're recommending somebody to be a referral partner, make the introduction and let them figure it out. Okay. Oh, I forgot. Ah, 
networking is not. Anybody know what I'm thinking about there? Selling in here? Sales. Okay. Networking is not sales. We are here to meet the people outside this room that the people inside this room know. That's why they call it referrals and networks. Okay? So I couldn't stay in business if, if I only had you guys as my customers. Most of us can say that that would be true for most of us. Okay? But when you become my advocate to the thousands of people you know, and it, you know, so people are still saying 250, I don't. How, does anybody in here have less than 250 connections on Facebook and LinkedIn put together? If you do, if you if you that, if the answer to that is yes, you need to start working with social media. I'll talk to Jen about that. Oh, you may want a small group. Oh, uh, and Randy, are you over two fifty on Facebook? No, but I because I I don't let people be Facebook friends. But on LinkedIn, you on LinkedIn, and I'm close to over three thousand. That's why I added LinkedIn yeah. to the question because I know there's people who are only using Facebook for friends or stuff. I think you're losing out, but that's your, that's your, that's that's your my prerogative. Choice, right? That's my choice. So I got on there for business and then used it for personal stuff later. Uh, so networking is about making warm introductions to people we know. And we're going to be specific and only ask for one thing per 30 second elevator pitch. That's a big one. Can you pass me that hot water? One thing for one person, one referral per commercial. And the referral is going to be a job title, it's going to be a referral partner. So we're not going to talk about people, people's wants and desires and dreams. We're going to talk about the people that we want to partner with because we both want to sell them something. Are you going to give us an example? Sure. Okay, so let's look at the table there. First column we're not going to use for the commercials, but that's who our customers are. So write down your best next customer who's very often the same kind of person as your best current customer. Yeah. Jenna, will you adjust so I can sit? I'm having some I can still see back you, but I'll issues. Even... Yeah, but it was just the top of my head, you know. So. Why is this nice? I got your little spread here. Now. Hey. So, um, and does anybody struggle to because there's one, there's some certain words that we don't use when we describe our target customers because they don't help us. Those are words anybody. <laughs> somebody. We want, no, somebody we want. You want to do business with somebody, not just anybody. Okay, so somebody who X Y Z. Somebody who we were talking um, earlier. Somebody who just had a child, just got married, just got divorced. <laughs> well, if you're in real estate and insurance and financial planning, those are the life events where you people decide to do things, <laughs> right? And that's certainly a better request than anybody who wants to buy or sell a house, because that's a waste of your time, that request. But let's throw anybody out, just like we're throwing out, what do you do? Let's just throw anybody out and start saying, your friend who, or things like that. You know, your customer who does a lot of printing. Your customer who has been in business for five years. Your customer who owns their own building, <laughs> whatever it may be. And then, <clears throat> does anybody need help putting down a customer description? Okay, yes? Why do you have multiple? Well, you're, you're going to have multiple. Our, our, our service is, is actually a multiple industry. Absolutely. And and so we're just talking about one prospect for now. And then that further down the table, we'll add more prospects. Build one bridge. <coughs> one complete bridge. And that starts right. with that. Right. And I, when I 
used when I used to be in advertising, we would identify three target niches to go after at a time because you just can't do more than that. Especially if it's just you. So three targets at a, you know, to, to focus on at a time. So sometimes, you know, it's a description like I just gave, life events. Sometimes it's an industry description, you know, like manufacturing or transportation or retail or what have you. Okay? The next question is, who else wants to sell them something? So somebody give me an example of what you wrote down as a prospect. Somebody job transition. Uh, hold on, her. She had her mouth full. Imagine that all the time. She was getting there. Oh. Commercial real estate broker owners. The owner of a commercial real estate firm. Yes. Okay. <coughs> Who else in this room would like to do business, sell stuff, your stuff, to the owner of a commercial real estate firm? I would. Okay. If keep your hands up. If you haven't had a one-on-one -on -one with Jenna, you need to have a one-on-one -on -one with Jenna. Next. Next. Now you can go for a one. That goes right there. That's the guy. Thank you. Thank you. Um. So the so who so tell me what uh, I'm sorry I didn't get your name. John. John, tell me what you do, John. I'm in the associate with Legal Shield. Legal Shield, okay. So, Legal Shield is a, a uh, referral partner, potential referral partner with somebody who does marketing. Mm -hmm. You want to be more specific? Or is that good enough for now? No, that's more than sufficient. Okay. So, we have marketing and we have Legal Shield. Do the services they both sell to, the, to a customer have anything to do with each other? Could. Not really. Oh, okay. I mean, marketing versus yeah. employee benefits, no. no. So they're going to be potential strategic partners. Unless you're, you're a lawyer, you're doing Facebook posts, no. Yeah, it's, it's no. It's, it's strategic, which means, which is just how we define that type of referral partner. Okay? So uh, if the thing you want to sell is similar, to what Jenna sells. So let's say you're a, uh, a you do TV and radio sales commercials. So that's marketing, advertising. That's similar. <coughs> that would be a synergy partner. And those definitions are on your worksheet. So synergy, related business, strategic, different business. Now we, we use definitions mainly to help come up with more ideas of people we want to meet and work with. It's okay if you decide that Legal Shield is synergy for you, and that's how you fill out your worksheet. Because you're who counts on your worksheet. And you can do big deals. If I was just on the phone to somebody, two major corporations, and the but it's a long-term strategic deal. Yeah. Everyone benefits. Everyone advertises for two months, and yeah, I mean, and people are in this room. It's amazing what can happen when you start thinking with this kind of strategy. And you keep your pipeline full. So, look at the at your at your first column and think about who else wants to sell something to that person and then decide which column they go. Strategic or synergy. So who's got another, let's do another example. Who's got a, a prospect, a customer a description they want to share? Maybe a stay-at-home spouse. Stay-at-home spouse, okay. Who else wants to sell something to a stay-at-home spouse? Okay, there's your one-on-one, your next one-on-one. And what do you do, Afton, for a stay-at-home spouse? Uh, well, American National Insurance, we help them protect the things you care about the most. Okay, so for the purposes of networking, we help our clients protect the things they love the okay, most. So we help the clients. Because once you start using the U word, that means you're selling to me and I stop listening to you. 
we're trained to stop listening when people start selling. Because you say you, then it's back on their... Then my, my wall goes up and I can't do that. Well, it's like they have all the control. When you say we... Well, no, it means you want me to buy it. That's all. It's as simple as that. So why did she say that was wrong? She said we help you protect the things you care about most. Now, that may be their tagline, and that's okay for a tagline out in the world. But if you do that tagline during a 30-second commercial, most of the people in the room will stop listening and you won't get any referrals from them. Why does you twice? They say, we help our clients protect the things they, they. they care about the most. I think that's actually the real tagline. Thank you. So what do you sell to the stay-at-home parent? I, I am a healthy lifestyle advocate. Okay. So I help people reach and exceed their health goals by okay. using the pipeline. Well, and moms and dads who are doing the primary raising of the kids care about sure. that. Yeah. yeah. Okay, good. Well, anybody else want to share one? John? Commercial drivers. Commercial drivers? You mean like Uber and Lyft, or do you mean like over-the-road truck drivers? CDL. Primarily, primarily over the road truck drivers. Okay, somebody. Over, <laughs> over road. Or local. Yeah, yeah somebody with the, with the commercial driver's license. Okay. Who else has something to sell to them? <laughs> yep, because they're always sitting. Anybody else? Lloyd? Yes? Yeah. They all have cell phones? Yeah. Yeah, electric bills. Yeah. All right. Is anybody stuck? Not able to list some, a couple of referral partners, or at least one in each category. Because we're there's no reason to be stuck. We're here to help. Synergy partner for us would be a mortgage, the mortgage company. And Your synergy company. partner is everybody who comes to the board of real estate meeting. The home inspector, the insurance, the mortgage, the title, all that's your synergy. And a financial advisor could be considered, considered synergy since you're both talking about money. Mm -hmm. And then everybody who fixes something at the house could be considered synergy too since you're selling the house itself. So everybody who comes to the house in a van? <laughs> partners or potential partners. Now see, I keep saying potential and I hope you notice that because you got to interview these people until you find the ones that understand about giving you referrals and getting referrals. You know, and just you a lot of fraud. Trust. Yeah, you got to build trust. Well, and you also got to make sure that they're not weird. the wrong kinds of people. Well, yeah, but the truth is, those we figure that out a lot quicker than we figure out right. if somebody There's understands how to give referrals and, and how to network. And different people have different definitions of who the right kind right. of people are. That's right. Just say. Can you work with that? Yeah, right. Yeah, so you got to kiss a lot of frogs. Um, and especially in things like electric and plumbing and roofing and, and all those contractors. And now, if you're a, a realtor and you don't have a carpet cleaner or a maid service in, in your network, you're missing out. Because they know what you sold before almost everybody else. Because the homeowner says, I need to clean the carpet so I don't have to buy a new carpet because I'm selling the house. So strategic partners for Karen. Who else wants to meet? Wants to what? What's what's your? How have you listed your uh, client request? Uh, my my referral. Uh -huh. I I did um, of people that are relocating to Dallas. Okay. Um, I did couples that uh, are married and uh, are thinking about starting a family because okay. they need larger homes. Got it. So who else wants to meet those people? Okay, and it, you know, for example, the health thing that would be a strategic partner because that's not related to the home or the purchase of the home. And what do you what do you help people with? Um, well, marketing and fitness. Okay, fitness marketing. Yeah. How do those two go together? Marketing, marketing well, because fitness. Because I have, I have trainers that 
And I was a trainer for five years and did a lot of social media marketing. So you help trainers find clients? Exactly, yeah. Got it. There you go. Okay. But he would be my synergy partner. Exactly. That is exactly right. He would be synergy. She would be synergy. Cool. Okay, so use your commercials to ask for the referral partners, and that's pretty much always a job title. What am I doing on time? Yeah, you've got a lot. You've got a lot? You've got, you've got a lot to fill. Yeah, you've you got a little help. I've got 30 minutes. How much have I done? You've got 12 yeah, minutes left. 12 left. Okay, because I knew I was past the halfway. Yeah. <laughs> it's not... A, a, this is not I can fill it. This is not your first rodeo. I believe you. I was like, but you need help. You're not feeling good. One of these gentlemen has some. I'm just, I'm losing my voice, so. Yeah. The back is a different color. So. But I'm getting rid of the gut to get the mouth and back to Because that's part of the problem. And I go to a great chiropractor. Helps a lot. Excuse me, folks. Let him close talking. Okay, so does anybody have questions about referral partners, whether you know which kind they be, or who's a referral partner for the prospect you've written down? Anybody stuck? Yes. I have a different question. Okay. What would you say your top two places are to meet these referral partners? At a networking group. Right. Um, get referred to them. In right. this room. In this yeah. room. Yeah, that's right. Got yeah, it. That's the idea. So, that's cool. Yeah. And as a matter of fact, I have a whole exercise that's part of one of my classes about turning the question, what do you do, into a referral. Because I don't ask it anymore, but other people ask it. So yeah, good question. The answer is networking. Sometimes it's networking online, like on Nextdoor or Facebook or something. You know, if you if I see a post that says I'm looking for a recommendation for, you name it, I'm going to tag somebody into that. And sometimes I'll tag more than one somebody. So yeah, let, let's talk about that a little bit. You're a member of at least one powerful networking group. You have an obligation to create opportunities for the other people in the group. Otherwise, why join? That obligation doesn't extend to not giving anybody else any opportunities. That obligation doesn't extend if they screw up something and it turns out they're not, they're not good at their job. Okay. Get them out of the group if that happens. I mean, every group I've been involved with, if we had somebody, and it doesn't happen very often, if we had somebody who was getting complaints, we didn't, they didn't stay in the group. It's a pretty, uh, now we're using a pretty self-regulating world. And the people who go from group to group, you know, they, you know, they don't last, they, don't, they just don't last. So, when you're, uh, just lost my train of thought, sorry. Uh, so we're talking about giving the referrals and the obligation, that's it, sorry. Now here's here's the story, and I, it just have, has not happened in real life, but I stick by this statement. If I marry a realtor, I'm not asking Karen. If I marry... <laughs> oh, darn. No, exactly. Mr. Opportunity, you all the words, right? If I marry a realtor, I still have to introduce the realtor in my networking group to some prospects along the way. I can't just exclusively give my I can't exclusively give my wife all the realtor. First of all, not everybody will want to work with her, right? Well, I don't know her, so maybe. And I don't know her yet either. <laughs> but and I hope I hope she's somebody with a job with benefits. <laughs> Instead of a real thing. There you go. But what I'm getting at is, I think the obligation is that important. Now, if somebody else in the group introduces me to somebody and they wind up telling me they want to buy a house before they tell somebody else, I should only give the referral to the realtor in the group. If the referral came from, came from inside the group, I should only make that one introduction, in my opinion. Well, it's about integrity. 
I agree. I believe it's an integrity thing. Now, again, that doesn't mean that every other situation I can't say, here's two realtors to talk to. Right. And they both should respect you for that integrity. Okay. So, anyway, any questions about that? Anybody want to argue about that? <laughs> uh, I've had the conversations. <laughs> All right, so let's talk about the three things not to do, that the, or the three things you want, the three requests, results, sorry, the three results in your 30 second commercial. Result number one is a referral today. That's why we're only gonna ask for one job title. Because if you ask for more, you get nothing. It's just how our brains work. Second, we're gonna, uh, we want a referral later. So we're going to tell a story that people will remember. And third, you want one-on-ones. You want what? One-on-ones. So one-on-one -on -one is a networking meeting. It's part of your job when you're networking. It's not a sales meeting. If you're selling in your one-on-ones, you're losing business. Just flat out, no ifs, ands, or buts. Because nobody will want to meet with you eventually. What are you doing? You are sharing that table with the person you're meeting, you're sitting down with. And you're listening. You're right, you're both, in other words, right. your job in a one-on-one -on -one is to learn those three things and convey those three things to the person you're meeting with. All the other stuff is great, but some people spend two hours sharing personal stuff and they never get to the business part. They're not networking, they're having coffee. And it's... Nothing wrong with having coffee with a friend or making a new friend. But if you're scheduling a one-on-one, let's have a one-on-one. -on -one. And the other stuff will come. What's the bullet points you would say cover on the one-on-one? Well, the, the main thing is that table. Now, I have a one-on-one -on -one worksheet that you can download from my website. There's the link at the bottom of the page. It's free. You just have to opt in. It's a one-on-one -on -one checklist. It's a Word doc, so you can edit it a little bit if you like. I just ask you to leave my info on it. And when you go to a meeting with a new person and you pull that worksheet out, you better bring two because usually they're going to go, what's that? It makes it easier to get referrals. And get referrals. Now, how about that person who you're pretty sure is going to sell to you? When they when you when they want to they want to have a coffee, how do you get out of that? I tell them I am available for a networking one on one where we share who each of us wants to meet. I'm not in the market for another revenue stream. I'm not in the market for another financial advisor. Those are the two that are parties that are most guilty about <laughs> selling one on ones. It's what they're taught. It's what some of them are taught. You know, and some, and again, the ones who succeed at networking and get a lot more business than any of those other people don't do it and get more business. Now, people in the room are going to become your customers if you do a good job at what you do. But that's organic. That's not why you're at the meeting. Questions about that? And make sure that as much as you can control it, that you each get half the time in your one-on-one. -on -one. I think they need to be an hour. Some people try to do it in 30 minutes. If somebody has an interesting job where they have a, their place of business as part of what they do, I try to have one-on-one -on -one there. You know, I want to see the chiropractor's office. I want to see the flooring guy's showroom. But other than that, having your one-on-ones around your meeting before and after is the best we use of your time. And the people who say they can't take four hours off a week to, to, to network, you can't really explain to them how much money though you make in those four hours. Because <laughs> it's not time off. It's, it's a substitute for pounding the phone or God forbid the pavement, knocking on doors. Networking is the answer to cold call. If 
I ever get the book done, the one of the one of the possible titles is Death the Cold Call. I like it. So three things not to do in your 30 second commercial. So well that's number three. Okay. Thanks for jumping in. Mm -hmm. Don't do all the talk. Uh, the number one, well, in your 30 second commercial, you're the only you one to be the only one. Oh, the, I'm sorry, this is the commercial. I apologize. Not the one I want, right? Yeah. Right. So, uh, the first don't is don't ask questions. Now, that doesn't mean when you're doing a regular speech, you don't use questions because they're a very effective tool. But in your 30 seconds, you don't have time to deal with the fact that people are sh going to shut down if you ask a question and they say no or maybe in their head and they stop listening to you. Or you ask them to raise their hand and nobody raises their hand and you, you're all demoralized and you forget what you're going to say. Just don't use questions. Turn the questions into statements. So instead of saying, uh, who knows somebody who had a car accident this year, you say some of you are friends who had a car accident this year. Just make it an affirmative statement. John. Well, now what you're, what you're saying is don't ask, don't ask yes or no questions. No, I'm don't saying ask don't ask questions. questions. Because once you ask a question, I'm thinking about the answer. I'm not listening to you anymore. Now, there are other folks in your space yeah. who say that use the one-on-one -on -one as an opportunity to ask qualifying questions to get people like to do surveys. Okay. So the question was, there are people who say use the one-on-one. -on -one. I'm sorry, in the 30 seconds. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. Just Okay. Tough day. Right. Use the 30 second commercial to ask qualified questions. Yes. Yeah. Through surveys. How and many you're selling in the room? I understand. I'm telling you what other people yeah, say. Yeah, and most people won't. And, and you can't get an accurate survey from. You can barely get an accurate survey anyway. Right. You can't get an accurate survey from people raising their hands because they won't raise their hands. That or they raise their hands out of obligation. And, yeah. They, you know, they feel sorry for you because nobody else. Yeah. 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 They feel sorry for you because nobody else raised their hand. <laughs> So if you'll give me a one minute. Well, let's do let's do the uh, the second reason. Actually, I need to pass out one more form, and when I talk about the second reason, the second no, which is the bigger the bigger no for a lot of people, and that is don't. Stop. I'm going to make sure I'm right in the camera. Don't start or end your commercial with your name. <laughs> I know everybody else is doing it that way, okay, but trust me, if you adopt my, at least this part of my system, you will get more results when you do a 30 second commercial. Don't start with your name for a laundry list of reasons, but most importantly, we're not ready to hear your name and, and comprehend it yet. Tell us your story about who you want to meet and how you help them. Or how you help that share, you know, you share business with each other and help a common customer. Mm -hmm. And the end of the commercial is a call to action. Because that's how effective commercials end with by telling us what to do next. So your name goes second to last. It takes practice. Mm -hmm. How many of you go to chamber do those uh, big chamber meetings where there's a hundred people doing commercials in the morning? Do they read a tell? Do they announce who's going to do their commercial? Most it depends on the chamber. In Plano, they read the card of who's going to get up and do their commercial. Yeah. So they go Bob Smith, and then Bob Smith stands up and says Bob Smith. And if he goes long, he gets the cowbell. We just heard his name. We're not going to remember it anyway. He's wasting 10, 20 percent of his time when he because we he really wants to know about the information at the end, Chris. So you said uh, make the name second to last. So how, what's an example of how you would end a uh, second commercial? The, the example is how you always end the commercial, and that is please write the name of the referral I just asked for on your business card and pass it to me. Well, how, how do you say your name then? Like how do you, how do you get... Say, well, I say my, I just, you, you, I mean, Jeff, I'm Jeff with Speaker Co-op. Please write the name of okay. the... the Realtor, I asked to meet on your on your business card and pass it to me so we can set up an interview. Who wants a new commercial? Right this minute. Lloyd Tan went up first. Who do you want to, who's the commercial about? 
Mm-hmm. Now, what, what referral partner do you want to meet? Oh, I want to meet a, uh, I'm going to go with the, an apartment manager. Okay. So they can refer you to their tenants? Exactly. Okay. So I know a little bit about the business like this, so that's probably the only question I need to ask. Uh, okay, you're recording? You're ready? Um, when people move, they change their electric bill. That's the first one of the first things they do, so they make sure they have power when they get at the new place. In apartment complexes, the manager can often help those new tenants get connected with better companies than other companies. At Stream, we've been helping people save money in their electric bill for 12 years. We're a cash positive, no debt company based right here in Dallas. Uh, I'm looking to meet apartment managers so I can help them help their tenants. My name is Lloyd with Stream. Please write the name of an apartment manager on your business card and pass it to me. So that's the structure, and I teach all six steps on the uh, audio and the ebook that you see on the enrollment form there, and then we also do it as a workshop. Um, I'm available to do the workshop here after one of the me- one of your meetings, whether it's Wednesday or Friday, if enough people want to do it, and the restaurant says it's okay, but if not, there's other places we can do the workshop. If three or more of you want to do it, we'll schedule it just for y'all. And then I've got the intermediate and the advanced classes, which you can prepay for and save some money on that as well. Any other questions? Short and sweet and very focused. Thank you very much. Thanks, Jeff. I saw the crime. I saw the, the people dying. I saw you know, helicopter lights in my backyard. I saw all of that stuff. I was even threatened to be killed. I, a whole bunch of drama happened in my world. But all I saw was my vision and my dream to do something with my life. I didn't really realize it. 